Singh spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go On the Range with Jay Delson. On the Range is brought to you by Vehicle Assurance. Hey, good morning, St. Louis. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got Pearly with me. Pearly, how are you this morning? Hey, I'm good, man. I've been dolphin watching and pelican watching, and I am ready to do the show. Me? Seriously? How many vacations does this guy this get? This guy's a permanent vacation. Where is he at? Where's Pearly? We, we talk about, you know, we've got this beautiful map up in the studio from all of our whacking <laughs> chasers. We need to have like a honing device here. We can't find Pearly. The, the Where's Waldo where's back in the Waldo? day? <laughs> where's Pearly? All right. We formatted the show like a round of golf. And this first segment is called the On the Range segment, and it's brought to you by my friends at Vehicle Assurance. 866 866- Three four one nine two five five. If you need coverage for your car, anything, any kind of car, they've got it for you. They've been in business for ten years. They do a great job. Check out our social media outlets. We're not going to tell you what they are. It takes up too much time. I want to thank Bob and Kathy Donahue at Donahue Painting and Refinishing for supporting the show. Three one four eight zero five twenty one thirty two. If you need any sort of refreshing for your home, anything inside, outside, man, they do great work. All right, John. Cannot wait. I got to sit down this week with the great one, Wayne Gretzky. I'll tell you, Jay, it blows me away. It's, that's a goat. Until you said you had him and and you haven't had a goat before, and I know you got another one coming, it's the greatest of all time. That means there's one of them in that sport, and you got him. Yeah, so excited. I can't wait to share this with the listeners. And just this humility, and uh, oh, man, it was just uh just really terrific. Um, some of the stories is family life. How important is mom and dad? The things he talked about, the stability they provided, and the examples was just really fun. Well, and and you tied in uh, the, the golf to that, and how important golf is in his life, and that kind of their family life right now. It was just a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to hearing what what people think of the interview. Yeah, me too. Well, we got it. We're going to run the tip of the cap segment right now because my good buddy Jordan Spieth just won the Texas Open. So the tip of the cap, it's brought to you by Dean Team of Kirkwood, 314 966 0303. And Jordan Spieth wins after four years, massive struggles. Uh, yeah, can't, all, all props to Jordan and his team. Uh, it's great to see him back in the winner's circle. Um, call our buddy Colin. Pearly, you experienced Colin. And probably you experienced Colin and um, Brandy is a big his kind of right hand person over there. She helped us a lot with uh, when we bought the car for Joe. So any sort of vehicle, Pearly, you just got a nice truck, a Toyota truck, any sort of vehicle. Colin is your man. Three one four nine six six zero three zero three. That's the Dean team of Kirkwood. All right, so John, I read this excerpt, shared a little bit of that with you. About from Jackie Nicholas. You know, we played college golf with Jackie when we were at UCLA a hundred years ago. He played at the University of North Carolina, and man, the name of his book is called "The Best Seat of the House," and it's a memoir. And it was really, really awesome. The, the parts that I was able to read. Well, give us some give us some uh, feedback on it. I haven't read it, so I want to hear what what impressed you the most. Well, one of the things that was interesting is that. Um, how Jackie said that his dad was never gone for more than two weeks in a row playing the tour, and he would, um, once he was home, he was he was home. He was there with the family. He was doing things. He wasn't out, you know, doing a bunch of golfy stuff and things like that. He was he was there as his dad. He also said that it was interesting when, um, ja- you know, Jackie turned pro and was going to try to play the tour and unfortunately never made it. But he went and saw our buddy Bob Rotella because he needed some help with sports psych stuff, uh, like everybody does, except for probably Jack Nicholas. Because when Jackie came home and he said, "Dad, you know, I talked to Bob Rotella. I have some homework." He he wanted me to ask you a couple questions, you know, uh, and most of them were based around Jack's ability to concentrate so well. When the, when the pressure was on, when he needed a couple birdies, it always seemed like Jack delivered. And Jackie was like, how do you do that, Dad? And he goes, I just do it. I don't know. And he goes, uh, Dad, it's not helping me. He goes, look, Jack, I don't know how else to say it. When I want to shout, I shout. When I want to concentrate, I just 
bear down a little more. And 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 uh, Jackie's <laughs> like, oh man, that you know that's that's really not going to to help me much, Dad. And he talks John about how not only did Jack he could tell that his mom and dad committed service to one another were his exact words, and that example to he and his brothers and sisters was just massive as role models as part of a team where they knew that they were you know those guys were joined uh, a joint front he also said this is probably you can totally relate to this he also said that his mother believed firmly that when jack came in off the road he needed to come into a happy house Good and his her. mom did that Good for her Uh, That's going to wrap up the front nine. So don't go anywhere. We've got our interview with the great one, Wayne Gretzky, coming up on the front nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hello, friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend Jay Delsing. Marcon Appliance Parts Company needs to recognize one of their own for reaching a career pinnacle that few even dare to aspire to. West Coast Vice President Jeff Diamond is a 45-year employee of Marcone and the most recognizable icon at any gathering of service industry professionals. With flowering silver hair and a matching personality, he has listened to, learned from, mentored, and entertained the most influential people in the appliance service industry. He's a road warrior, all right, whose perseverance and drive have earned him the friendship of hundreds and the respect of thousands. Well played, Jeff. Thanks for your dedication and tremendous attitude. It's great to be on your team. Marcon Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and proud distributor of General Electric Parts. I am delighted to welcome Marie Davila to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. I'm sure you know where it is, but in case you don't, Marie Davila is a landmark out in West St. Louis County. It's located on the corner of Clayton and Weidman Roads. It's also on 21 beautiful rolling acres right on the way out to Queenie Park. It's a country club-like atmosphere. It's iconic, and it's absolutely gorgeous. When my dad died and my mom decided she didn't want to live alone, Marie de Villa was the first place we called. When we pulled up, we were greeted at the front door by the owner, and he took us around on a tour of the facility. We learned that there are one, two, and three-bedroom villas that you can live in, and there's also 24-hour care in the East, West, and the Waterford buildings. So Marie de Villa had everything that my mom wanted. One of the things that stood out in my mind as well was the way The family-owned business treats their guests. That's right. They refer to them as guests, but they treat them like family. So if you're in the process of trying to make a tough decision for this next part of life, you got to visit Marie de Villa. This is local. This is family. And this is St. Louis. This is Marie de Villa. Come be our guest. When things come out of left field, having a game plan makes all the difference. Luckily, Farmers Insurance has been helping people cover their bases for more than 90 years, and they can help you, too. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach today to see if you have the coverage you want for whatever curveballs may come your way. Call 314-398-0101. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. SSM Health Physical Therapy treats all athletes ranging from the weekend warrior to the professional. Their sports specially trained physical therapists treat all types of sports injuries from football to baseball, soccer to gymnastics, and running to golf. Let my friends at SSM Health Physical Therapy help you get back on the field and maximize your potential like they've helped me with my knee surgery. Call them at 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The front nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. i got Pearly with me. Brad Barnes is keeping... Uh, great care of us here at the ESPN studios. We're headed to the front nine brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Man, this uh, is going to be spectacular. First week of September, September 6th through 12th, Norwood Hills Country Club. I'm saying best field in, on the Champions Tour all year and best tournament on the champion schedule in year two. It's going to be spectacular. 
Okay. I thought maybe you'd say something there, Pearl. All right. <laughs> We're good. We're good. We're good. Um, all right. So let's just go right to this interview with Wayne Gretzky. Wayne, the great one, sixty owner of 61 NHL records when he retired from the NHL. Um, hope you enjoy this interview. I got to catch my breath so I can slow down a little bit. I'm very excited to get this uh, to you folks today. Something about blue. I feel good in blue. Puts on the penalty box. Feeds Gretzky. He's got a breakaway. Fakes. He shoots. He scores! Wayne Gretzky, a breakaway goal against Kirk McLean. Number 99 has the first of many with the St. Louis Blues. Oh, baby! The Great One, Wayne Gretzky, is brought to you by Golden Tee. I have the honor of sitting down this morning and talking to Wayne Gretzky. When I look back at your career, playing 20 years in the NHL, you were inducted in the NHL Hall of Fame the year you retired. Uh, you're the last player mm-hmm. that they, you know, they waived the three-year waiting period. Gretz, would, would you ever look back at, at what you've accomplished and just kind of shake your head? <laughs> uh, that's nice of you to say, but no, I, I, uh, I, I more look back and think how lucky I was uh, to play in the NHL. I look back and feel how fortunate I was to meet the people I got to meet, uh, have the memories that I got collected throughout my career. Uh, You know, I was telling my kids the other day that when I grew up, the world was such a big place. There was no internet. Uh, We used to look at maps and we had globes. Uh, and the world seemed to be such a big place. Uh, today, it seems to be such a, a small place. Uh, so for me, uh, I knew that uh, through the game of hockey, I was going to get the opportunity to travel and see some cities that I would never get to see. And I'm not talking worldwide. I'm just talking going from Ontario to British Columbia or going east to Newfoundland, Uh being able to go to the province of Quebec, just so many uh, great memories. uh, And it all came because we came of hockey. So I pinched myself more in the fact that I feel so fortunate that uh, the the game of hockey opened so many doors for not just myself, but for my entire family. So I feel very lucky, actually. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And, you know, Wayne, speaking of family, I know you just lost your dad just not long ago. And for for another person that's lost their dad, it's such a difficult time. The way you you grew up in Brantford and your family was such an important part of all this, wasn't it? Your humility comes through, Wayne, in all these interviews you do. Well, I was lucky. Um, You know, the most important people in your life, uh, obviously your mom and dad, but it's an extension from your grandparents. Uh, and then, you know, you have kids and, you know, for me, I'm so fortunate. Uh, uh, my parents were just truly wonderful people. Uh, we, we weren't rich as far as financially uh, the world goes, but we were rich in love and compassion and uh, closeness and, you know, it's always tough when someone passes. Uh, we, we, we all go through it. But the good news was, uh, you know, we had a great life. Um, we had some wonderful memories together with some wonderful times. Uh, and those things don't go away. That, those are things that last forever. And, uh, you know, you, I always tell uh, people when I meet them, the one thing in life that we all know is that we have one dad and we have one mom and that's the bottom line. And I was lucky. My parents were wonderful people. You know, Wayne, I love the tribute that they showed. Um, I think it was on TSN with your dad in, um, in the hearse rolling down the street and all of these people lining the street. It's almost emotional for me to, 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 and they all had hockey sticks and were tapping the pavement in honor of your dad. <laughs> Yeah, it was um, pretty unique. Um, you know, COVID has been such a hard thing for everyone. And the pandemic has been awful. There's no, there's no way around it. It's just been horrible for the entire world. And Canada and the U.S., it's been bad. And 
Um, the the one thing that we got to do because of it was we we pretty much had sort of a private ceremony. Uh, I, I was teasing my brothers that you know if there wasn't a pandemic, I don't know where we could have held the funeral because Dad had so many friends and so many people that he spent time with and he helped and he loved and so from a family point of view, from a selfish point of view, it was, it was you know pretty private. But when we left the uh, church. Uh, we didn't anticipate seeing what we saw. It was pretty emotional. Um, and I was saying in the car on the ride to the cemetery, uh, Dad would be smiling uh, right now because, you know, he, he did so many good things for so many people that, uh, you know, that went under the radar. Uh, he had this little a blind boy that he took to church for 25 years every Sunday. Um, and to see him at my dad's service and see the people, how they kind of honored my dad. Uh, it was, it was truly only fitting because he, you know, that's the kind of man that my dad was. And, and, and Wayne, those stories are just incredible and it's too bad. We're in a, our world, you know, doesn't put those on the news like they should. Not that your dad did it for any sort of recognition, but there are so many yeah. good things that go on unnoticed because we'd much rather hear about, you know, lousy things that are happening than, than something like that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, that's life right now, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, the bottom line is there's so many good people out there and so many people that have done so much for so for people that are less fortunate and not as lucky as we all are. Uh, and my dad was definitely one of those people that just truly loved helping people and he, he he would serve uh, dinners to the homeless twice a week and he went to church every Sunday. He had such strong faith. I, I, I was telling my kids a couple of weeks ago that, you know, his, his faith was so strong and yet uh, he didn't eat or, or have anything to drink for over 20 days. He, he, he didn't want to pass. He, he loved life and wanted to be around his family. Um, but, and the other side of it is faith is so strong that I know he's in a good place right now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's terrific. Um, we, let's talk a little bit about the modern game, the modern game in the NHL compared to when you played. Uh, I was looking at some videos the other day when you guys played, in, and, and even a little bit uh, when you first came into the league. The one thing that stands out to me besides, you know, you guys basically played in a wrestling and a boxing league that, that was on – you know, skates compared to what they're doing now. But the goalies in the NHL are these monster men with massive pads. It's It, it just stood mm-hmm. out like a sore thumb. <laughs> well, the game has changed. You're, you're so right about that. Uh, you know, first of all, the, the equipment and the technology itself is so much better than when I played. Uh, you know, the size of the athlete, has changed tremendously. Uh, athletes of today's era in every sport are so strong and so dedicated. Uh, my goodness, just the, 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 the off season training and the nutrition that they go through compared to what we, we knew back in the seventies and eighties. Um, so, you know, the athlete of today's era is just a better athlete and, and that's okay. You know, that's the way it should be because, I really believe 20 years from now, the athletes would be better there then than they are now. Uh, so it's, it's progression. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying that the goalies weren't good back when I played, but today's goalies are great athletes. Uh, Grant Fear was one of the first goaltenders that really uh, was more than just a goaltender. He was an athlete. He was probably the best athlete on that team that I was with with Edmonton all those years. So the goaltenders of today are good athletes. The equipment is lighter for them. It's, it's bigger. And that's when you see guys like Ovechkin doing what he's doing and Crosby and Connor McDavid. It's truly remarkable um, because they are playing in a, in a tougher sort of scenario than when I played and Brett Hall played and Gordy Howe played. But that's okay. You know, uh, that's a positive for the sport. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to compare eras because things change all the time. Uh, but 
that's what makes sports fun. People sit around and they debate who was the best team ever, uh, who were the best players ever. And that's what makes sports so entertaining that, that we have these conversations. But I'm the first guy to tell you the athletes of today in hockey are better than when I played. It's as simple as that. And that's, that's no knock on anyone because at the time uh, we were the best athletes that they could find in those days. And today they're just, they happen to be bigger, stronger, and faster. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. You know, you know, Wayne, it's, that's really well said. When you played the game, it was obvious you, you saw the game differently. It almost was like the way that you played revolutionized. It, 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 it certainly revolutionized the game. Posting up behind the net like you like to do, the Gretzky office, the, those sort of things. How much of that influence was, was what your dad used to tell you? And how, how, did, you, how did this uh, evolution come from you, this ability to see the ice, read the ice, avoid getting your head taken off every night? How, how did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Partly because of fear. <laughs> <laughs> Survival, right? Uh, yeah. It's a matter of being uh, safe. But, no, you know, I, I, I tried out for my first hockey team when I was five. And uh, in those days, uh, the the first league that started was 10-year-olds. Uh, there was no seven-year-old league. There was no six-year-old training sessions. It was like, all right, there's a 10-year-old travel team, and anybody who's 10 or under, come and try out. And so I made the team. Uh, as a five-year-old, and the coach came to my to our house uh, to get my birth certificate to sign me up for the league. And when my dad handed him the birth certificate, the, the coach kind of laughed. He goes, I, he can't play. He's only five. I, he can't be on the team. <laughs> I remember the coach left, and I couldn't play. Um, so I didn't play on the team. And the next year, uh, when I was six, I made that team. And, of course, being six with 10-year-olds, I was the smallest player in the in the team and smallest player in the league. Uh, so right from a young age, at the age of six, uh, I had to learn how to utilize my skills, which were my hockey sense, um, my knowledge of the game, uh, my belief in what I did, uh, skating and shooting and passing. Um, and, and at the age of 14, uh, I signed to play with a team that was basically 18, 19, and 20, so the point of the story was, you know, I, my game really didn't have to change throughout my whole life because I was always playing against bigger players and stronger and faster. So I had to come up with ideas and ways to compete against those those athletes. Um, and I had a junior coach when I was 14 that told me, you know, watch Bobby Clark play. Bobby Clark play, plays behind the net, in the corner, uh, He's changing the game. So I studied Bobby Clark a great deal, uh, and I practiced it from a young age of 14. And I think it was something new uh, that defensemen and defense and team defense had never seen before. And so for a few years, I was able to, you know, sort of surprise uh, opponents. And so I just sort of mastered and utilized my knowledge of playing behind the net uh, using the net as sort of a decoy and as a defense mechanism. And, you know, it just, I carried it throughout my career. So it wasn't like when I turned pro and said, okay, I got to play behind the net and how do I do this? I would kind of been working on that for years before I got to the NHL and, uh, it never really ever changed. Uh, I wasn't the size of Phyllis Mazzito, so I couldn't stand in the middle of the ice and, I would have gotten knocked over and been on my butt more times than not. So I just sort of perfected playing behind the net, and I just continued throughout my whole career. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm visiting with Wayne Gretzky, uh, owner of 61 NHL records when you retired in 1999. Hey, Wayne, can you tell us this story? I, doing the prep for this interview, I was fascinated by this WHA story in this, this fellow named um, uh, Scalbania. Uh, who I I guess is the story about the private plane and you and your your goaltender and uh, and other forward Peter Driscoll is that a true story? Yeah, it was it was uh, really um, I was really lucky 
uh, Nelson had signed me, uh, even though I was still playing junior A hockey. And actually, Nelson and I are still friends to to, to this day. Uh, I still talk to him every now and then. And, um, he, he changed my life, and I always tell him that uh, it's something I'll never forget. Uh, you know, he took a chance on a 17-year-old, 148-pound kid that people weren't sure to play professional hockey, and he had the sort of foresight to step up and say, you know, I want to have him, and I think he can be a professional hockey player. So I always tell him he changed, he changed my life uh, forever, changed it for the better. Uh, he, he, he was really uh, developed a friendship between not only him and I, but my family. Um, and so when I was in Indianapolis, um, I probably, at that time, uh, it wasn't a huge hockey city. And you take this 17-year-old kid and try to build a uh, uh, sort of fan following. It was tough for everyone. Uh, and it was probably, I, I probably wasn't quite ready for that. Uh, and so Nelson asked me, you know, I'm going to sell you. He didn't even say trade. He said, I'm going to sell you. <laughs> and uh, where do you want to go, Winnipeg or Edmonton? Um, we chose Edmonton because uh, at the time, my agent, uh, Gus Bedelli, had said, you know, one day there is going to be a merger between the WHA and the NHL. Edmonton's got a brand new 16,000-seat arena. And they probably have a better chance than anybody of getting into the NHL. So that was really the reason that we chose Edmonton. Um, I was kind of a throw-in in the deal. Eddie Neal at the time was one of the best goalies in the WHA, and Peter Driscoll was an all-star left winger. And so when I, when we got on the airplane, <laughs> uh, the pilot asked who was paying for the flight. Uh, <laughs> of course, I, I was 17. I had about $80 in my pocket and wasn't old enough to have a credit card. Um, Eddie Mio handed him the credit card and said, I got a $700 limit, but here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck to the you, pilot man. took it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we ended up in, in uh, Edmonton and, you know, as they say, the rest is history. But I remember getting on the plane. I was so excited, but I had to sort of contain myself a little bit uh, because both Eddie and Peter loved Indianapolis and played there a couple of years and they were a little bit uh, caught off guard. Um, and, you know, as things work out, that, that's, that's life and pro sports. But um, when we did get on the plane, it was a kind of a, 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 a little bit of a funny feeling because I was so excited about going and they were uh, not overly pleased, but it seemed to all work out for everyone. Well, I've read something, Wayne, and I don't know if it's true or not, but Nelson uh, offered, you know, you guys as a package to both Edmonton and Winnipeg and, and offered to play a game of backgammon with the Winnipeg Jets owner, Michael uh, Gobati. I don't know if that's true or not, but I just thought I've never heard of such a thing. You know, I, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, ironically enough, Michael Gabadi and I are, are still friends today, and we periodically uh, see each other and chat on the phone. Uh, he lives here in California. So we, we, we've we tried to get to the bottom of what happened in Winnipeg. Uh, Bobby Hall really wanted me to come to Winnipeg. He was a small uh, percentage owner but was still playing, and he wanted me to come and play with him. Uh, from what we've sort of uncovered, the general manager at the time, Rudy Pillis, wasn't overly sold on the 17-year-old young skinny kid playing professional hockey. So I think it was more that, listen, and I, I mean this sincerely, uh, Glenn Sather took a chance on me. Uh, he really wanted Peter Driscoll and Eddie Neal, um, but he took a chance on, on, on me, and uh, fortunately everything worked out fine. Okay, so that's going to wrap up the front nine, but don't go anywhere because we're going to complete the, the second portion of the Wayne Gretzky interview on the back nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, everybody, it's Vince Kiel. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. If you have a car and you're struggling to get some protection for that car, let me recommend Vehicle Assurance. 1-866-341-9255 is their number. They have been in business for over 10 years and have a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is one of the reasons why they have over 1 million satisfied customers. They are known for their painless claims process 
and their premium vehicle protection. So whatever that car looks like, they can help you. You can find them at VehicleAssurance.com or call them again at 866-341-9255 for a free quote. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. Ah. Don't miss the hottest rookie class in PGA Tour Champions history. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club September 6th through the 12th. Join legends Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson, and Hale Irwin to celebrate the PGA Tour Champions' newest event. Professional golf returning to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, pro-am foursomes on sale now. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. I am with my buddy Joe Schieser from USA Mortgage. Hey, Jay, how are you? Doing great, Joe. Thanks so much for the support of the show. Ah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Congratulations. This is uh, your third year, and we're really proud to be a sponsor all three years since the very beginning. It's a great show, and we look forward to it every Sunday morning. Well, thanks a bunch. Tell us just a little bit about USA Mortgage and what you can do for people. Well, USA Mortgage is an ESOP. It's an employee-owned company. So over a 1,000 families here in St. Louis work for the company. So if you want an opportunity to patronize a a local company, please call USA Mortgage, 314-628-2015, and I'll be more than happy to sit down with you, go over your options, discuss all the different programs that are available, and give you an opportunity to support a local company. That's awesome, Joe. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Jay. Thank you. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring Golden Tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, The Ultimate Virtual Golfing Experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. We're halfway there. It's time for the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is brought to you by Fogelbach Agency with Farmers Insurance. And welcome back to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got Pearly with me. We're headed to the Back Nine that is sponsored by the Fogelbach Agency with Farmers. 391 398 for any of your insurance needs. Personal, your business, call Ed. He's got his, his, uh, a couple of his children working at the agency. They're great people to help you. Um, we're going straight to the conclusion, the second half of the Wayne Gretzky interview. Gretzky looking, Gary Curry, McSorley to Gretzky! Wayne Gretzky, the great one, is brought to you by Golden Tee. I, I've had the pleasure of meeting you in person several times, but you had a tournament up in uh, Toronto. Uh, I think you you, uh-huh. you were in conjunction with Ford. I think you were doing some business with Ford. And um, you had all sorts of uh, NHL alums and current players. I know Hully was up there. You know, Hully likes golf more than any tour player I've ever met. He just loves the game and plays it probably as much as well. But you you have a real affinity for the game of golf, don't you? Yeah, you know, um, when I was 16, my, my dad told me that, you know, he should take up golf. And I remember asking why and he was saying that, you know, if you become a professional hockey player, uh, the, the hockey guys are, are uh, I guess, say it best, the wonderful people and they all try to, help out local charities and do things for the positive. And he said, you know, you you might be invited to play in these tournaments and you don't want to embarrass yourself. So that's <laughs> kind of how I started playing golf. Uh, my summers were filled with box lacrosse and track and field and baseball. Uh, so anyway, I did take it up. And um, through that, through the game of hockey, I've hosted many tournaments. And I, I had the good fortune of playing in Greenville, uh, Carolina uh, in a pro-am event that's similar to that of Pebble Beach. And I really love the format. Um, you know, helping raise money for charities and more importantly, or just as important, these kids uh, who are trying to get on the tour um, were really, really, truly good people. And I just felt, you know, okay, I can uh, maybe pull this off and have an event where you know, it's sort of uh, the Corn Ferry Tour, sort of like AAA players, 
uh, American League hockey players. They're, they're the next level down trying to get on the PGA Tour. So we had an event for five years. It was a lot of work. It was a huge commitment by, you know, our um, people that uh, volunteered to help make the event special. Uh, the players themselves were wonderful. And on the other side of it, the, the hockey players that I had come to the event really enjoyed it. Uh, and then, you know, your corporate sponsors, it's so vital to have that. And Ford was uh, nice enough to step up to the table and uh, be a huge part of the success of the event. So I did have a lot of fun with it. It was unique, um, but it was very much time consuming, but something I really enjoyed. And Wayne, I know last November was really special for you and your family where DJ knocks off the Masters. Uh, he's It's his second major championship piece. He went through a, I'll say a Tiger esque type run where, man, seven, eight, ten weeks in a row, he was never outside the top five, and it was really great to see him put the green jacket on. Yeah, you know, it, <clears throat> I don't even know where to begin because it was so uh, overwhelming, and and <clears throat> you know, like you said, it's the the sort of topped off by winning the Masters, but he had been on such an incredible roll for a few months uh, in the, all the tournaments that he was playing. And, and, and ironically, we had uh, gone to uh, Columbus, Ohio, in early, in early June of last year. Um, I have a, a friend who has a membership there in, in Columbus uh, at a course called Double Eagle, which is a wonderful place. And so we, we got a chance to play with um, the young man, Maverick McNeely, on, on the Monday. Uh, and then Dustin had flown in Monday night with our grandkids and his brother. And so we got to play with Dustin uh, and his brother on Tuesday uh, before the Memorial Tournament. And that was the beginning of sort of a tough stretch where, you know, I think he shot 80, 80, 79, 80 in back-to-back tournaments. Um, and then from there, he just seemed to skyrocket and go to another level to, to a point where uh, I think he won in Boston at 30 under, uh, which was pretty remarkable, and then to win the FedEx. And then heading into Augusta, um, he, I, I'm not sure if people know, but he, he kind of grew up in that area, Columbia, South Carolina. Um, so he's always, any golfer wants to play in the Masters. That's the, the sort of their Stanley Cup, I guess you would say. Uh, although every major is wonderful and every tournament you win is great, but there's something unique about the Masters. And so we got to spend the week there. Um, my wife Janet was filming a movie in uh, Georgia the week before. Uh, so we were there and then just drove over to Augusta and spent the week there. And I tell people this all the time, uh, Monday practice round, Tuesday, Wednesday practice rounds, and then leading Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, his demeanor didn't change one iota. Uh, he was the same person Saturday night at dinner as he was Monday night at dinner. Uh, and so he was so focused, um, so driven to be successful there, and it was as any golfer would tell you, the dream is to put on a green jacket. So when it ultimately happened, uh, obviously it was overwhelming for all of us. And I know for him and his mom and dad and his family, uh, being from that area. Um, and it was exciting. We, we got on the airplane and flew back to uh, Florida for a couple of weeks. And I remember telling him this was the one thing I never got to do as a NHL player, win a championship on the road. And I just felt, so honored to be around um, everyone on the plane from Claude Harmon, his golf coach, and uh, Joey, his fitness guy, and his brother Austin, his caddy, and of course her family. It was just, it was like I won the Stanley Cup on the road. And that was the one thing I never forget that flight back from Augusta back down to Florida. Uh, it was pretty overwhelming for all of us and so unique and so, so much fun. Uh, so, I know he's focused this week. Um, it's hard to win back-to-back in any uh, sport, but uh, I know he feels confident. He'd flown up there a couple weeks earlier to play a few days to get some practice in, and 
as all the, a lot of the guys do. So he's focused and he's ready to go, and we can't wait. Janet and I are going to be there, and we're going to get to walk around this year, and we're very excited about it. You know, Wayne, I've never met – I've been, had the pleasure and opportunity to play with some of the great ones, but I have never – seen an attitude like his that is, I'm going to say perfect. He's able to shrug things off and to move on from what 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 happened with the USGA and the US Open and Oakmont in 2017 would have knocked anybody's head off their shoulders. And the way he handled it, I just had I, I had so much respect. Yeah, I, I uh, he's, he's definitely um special and unique. Claude Harmon and I talked about this a lot at length, uh, that athletes in every sport, not just golf, uh, that, that's the sort of the mindset and the attitude you want to have. Because in sports, you're going to fail. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have bad games. I know myself, I played as many bad games as anyone. You don't try to play bad games, but it happens. Uh, and the same as golf. You, you're going to have bad shots or bad days, bad holes. But he has this ability uh, to focus and regroup like I've never seen. Uh, but that's him as a person. He doesn't let a lot of things bother him. Uh, he doesn't try to control things that he can't control. He doesn't overly worry about things that are out of his hands. Um, and he's, he's smart. He's so intelligent. Uh that I think people are starting to realize uh, what kind of a savant that he really is in the game of golf. I had asked him, uh, he, hit, he hit in the rough on Sunday on 13. And it was kind of rainy and wet um, on the night before. And he sort of, on the second shot on 13, he chunked a sort of a three or four iron as it got about four feet off the ground and ran about 220 yards. And I remember I said to him, I said, did you miss that shot? Because um, I, I never see you do that. Uh, and he said, no, no, I, I did it on purpose. I had mud on my ball, and I was trying to keep the ball low to let it run and get all the mud off the ball. <laughs> so when I hit my third shot, there'd be no mud on the ball. Unbelievable. And I'm sitting there thinking, who thinks of that? I mean, we all get up to the ball, and we all say, okay, i got to hit it 200 yards, and we hit it, right? And the, those are the little things that, that he does that um, people don't understand. That's how smart he is, and his knowledge of the game is is at a number one player in the world level. That's why he's number one. <laughs> so I, I remember saying to him, well, I never thought of that. I didn't know – I wouldn't <laughs> know that you do that. And I'm more amazed that the TV broadcasters didn't talk about that because obviously they didn't know either. Uh, so it's pretty special to hear him say something like that. Oh my gosh! It's uh, well, it's obvious that he has taken his game to the next level. He's got the ability to dominate when he plays well, like that, like the exhibition he put on in Boston last year. Um, Wayne, one of the things that was so impressive for me to watch about DJ is how he Im- improved his wedge game and also his putter, because I did notice that mm-hmm. he used to have a tendency to kind of cut his putts off a little bit and have put a little bit of left or right spin on him early in his career. Did you have yeah. anything like that in hockey that you had a tendency to do that you didn't like that you worked on continually? Or can you relate to that uh, with your game? Oh, 100%. Uh, you know, I had this coach for years and became one of my best friends and closest confidants, John Muckler uh, in Edmonton. John Muckler used to always say, we're, we're creatures of habit. Every athlete's the same. You work on you work on what you do well. And it's just that's the way sports are. That We, we want to get better at what we do good instead of improving what we're doing poorly. Um, and I would say, if, like, if you notice hockey players, uh, when they step on the ice, the first thing hockey players do is they all turn to the right and they start skating uh, counterclockwise because that's what we're used to and that's what we're comfortable with. <laughs> that's it. So as an athlete, to be successful, you, you have to improve on and get better at what you're weakest at. Um, 
Now listen, when you're the top five players in the world, as as Dustin was for the last eight, six, seven, eight years, you're you're good. You're good at everything. There's a reason you're number three or number four. But then there's a different level of going to number one. Uh, that means, you know, you have a target on your back. Everybody wants to knock you off. Everyone wants to beat you. But you have that mindset that you're going to work harder than anyone else to stay number one. And that's what, you know, great athletes from, you know, Jack Nicholas and Tiger um, in the game of hockey, Crosby and Ovechkin, they just, they want to stay number one. Um, and Dustin has that mindset now that, okay, uh, here's what I'm going to keep working on. Here's what I'm going to get better at. Um, that's going to keep me at being number one. And now with that, when you become number one, it becomes uh, sort of a confidence booster that you believe in yourself even more than people think you believe in, that you, you're not going to lose. And Tiger had that mindset, and Dustin has that mindset now. Um, and so you work on everything, but you also mentally become stronger because you don't want to lose that mantle. Yeah, it's so true, isn't it, Wayne? People don't understand how difficult it is to work on the stuff that you're not as good at. The stuff that you're more oh. proficient at comes so easy. Yeah, I, I, I heard an interview from a, a golfer one day on the radio, and he was, I think he was rated like 155 in the world. Uh, and, you know, top 155 in the world, you're, you're a pretty good golfer. Uh, you know, it's pretty pretty special to be in that category. But he, he was saying in his interview uh, to, to, the, to the guy, to the commentator, that, I'll tell you how good those top four or five guys are. If you're a six handicap, you're probably closer to me as a player than I am to them who are the top three or four guys in the world. That's how good they are. And so, you know, like I said earlier, sports is just getting better. The equipment's better, the technology, the training, um, the practicing. Uh, it's just gone to another level in every sport. So to be in those top four or five golfers, top ten golfers, uh, that's tough. Those guys are good. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> we, we all aspire to be those guys, but obviously some of us, we're, ne- we're never going to get there, but we all aspire to be that, that good. Yeah, it's it, it, was, it was a thrill for me. I never even approached that, but it was a thrill for me to think that I could, you know, to to to, to toss it in, toss my hat in the ring, and you know, I got my teeth yeah. kicked in a bunch, but it's still, I still had a blast trying. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what makes golf unique. Um, you know, you can't jump on the ice and practice or play with the St. Louis Blues. Uh, you can't go out there and take batting practice or play with the Cardinals. Um, but we can all get on a golf course and compete and try to be Jack Nicholas or Dustin Johnson. And that's what makes golf so unique. Gretzky, I just want to just give you a few more props. When, when you came to St. Louis, cause I can remember that first game you played and I had never heard any sort of noise inside that uh, arena like that. Not for me, at least. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I look back at it. Uh, to get a chance to play with Brett and uh, obviously Grant Fuhrer and guys like Al McGinnis. Uh, St. Louis is a great city. Uh, it really truly is. And, you know, we spent a lot of time there. My wife's family's from there. And we spent a lot of time in St. Louis and have a lot of good friends. It's one of the best sports cities in all of North America. And uh, people ask me all the time, where do you spend time? And I always tell them we have a house in St. Louis. And everybody always says the same thing. Why does why do people love St. Louis so much? I said, well, you, you have to kind of go there to understand <laughs> it. it. It's a big little city where nobody gets mad at anybody. It's just nice people. And uh, we're truly blessed that we get to spend time there. And we love it. All right. That's going to do it for the Wayne Gretzky interview. Pearl. Man, I, I've finally caught my breath. I've been so jacked up to have Wayne on the show. I love the fact that we finally had, you know, the greatest of all time in some sort of category. And uh, I can't wait to break this down with you. Uh, it's so much fun, Jay. I thought you did a great job. And what a, what a thrill for, uh, for us to have him on the show.
All right, so that's going to wrap up the back nine, but uh, don't go anywhere. On the Michelob Ultra 19th hole, we're going to break down the Wayne Gretzky interview. It's Golf with Jay Delsing. This is Bill DeWitt III, president of the St. Louis Cardinals, and you're talking to Jay Delsing. And wait, oh, sorry, what's the name of the show? Uh, Golf with Jay Delsing. Oh, yeah, let me start it. <laughs> My bad knee affected everything I did from walking to swinging a golf club. SSM Health Physical Therapy has Titleist Performance Institute certified physical therapist. They performed a physical screen on me to see how efficiently I was moving and then gave me golf-specific stretching and exercises to help my game. It's been awesome. Call them at 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web, SSMPhysicalTherapy.com, to get set up with one of the TPI-certified physical therapists. See you out on the course. Your therapy, our passion. Are you looking for a great career? Do you like meeting nice people, working with your hands, and fixing things inside the home? Marcon Appliance Parts Company would like to encourage you to consider a high-paying career in major appliances repair and service. Major appliance service technicians are in very high demand. Major appliance techs work regular hours and make excellent money. They work local, in their own communities, and are home every night. It is an incredibly stable industry and highly rewarding work. Discover more about your new career in major appliance services today by contacting a local appliance service company in your hometown. In Fairview Heights, Illinois, contact Doug Klein at Klein's Brand Source. The phone number is 618-397-1216. Marcona Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and proud distributor of General Electric Parts. I know you've heard me talk about Whitmore Country Club. I want to thank them for supporting the show again for the third year and tell you things are going great for them. There's 90 holes of golf when you join at the Whit- at Whitmore Country Club. The membership provides you access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardeen, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. Cart fees are included. There's no food or beverage minimums and no assessments. 24-hour fitness center is fantastic. There's two large pool complexes uh, and three tennis courts. Stop in the golf shop. you got to see my buddy Bummer. He is an absolute great guy that would love to help you with your game and love to show you around um, the uh, facility. He and his staff uh, run golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, couples events. There's live music. There's... Uh, uh, great dining opportunities out there, outside, inside. Anything you and your family need golf-wise, fun-wise, visit WhitmoreGolf.com or call them at 636-926-9622. Professional golf returns to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club September 6th through the 12th. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, and pro-am foursomes are on sale now. All proceeds go to North St. Louis County Charities. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com or call 314-938-2828. PGA Tour Golf is back in the loo. The Ascension Charity Classic. Have you met your local farmer's insurance agent, Ed Fogelbach? He proudly serves St. Louis area families and businesses and is ready to review your existing policies and provide a no-obligation quote today. Call the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101 to get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Fogelbach Agency with Farmer's Insurance at 314-398-0101. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I want to tell you about Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. My friend Colin Burnt runs the store over there, and he helped me buy a used Volkswagen for my daughter, Joe when she turned 16. We've had the car for over a year. It's running great. It's nice and safe, and we've taken it there to get it serviced just recently. Pearlie, that does the show with me, just bought a nice Toyota truck from Colin. So I want you to know that if there's any sort of vehicle you need, anything at all, you can get it at the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. You can call them at 314-966-0303 or visit them at DeanTeamVWKirkwood.com. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. All right, this is Golf with Jay Delsing. Welcome back. We're headed to the 19th hole ball. Blah, blah. Brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Man, an ultra, grab one, Pearl. And let's open it right now and talk a little Wayne Gretzky. 
What a fun interview. What what a fun interview. What what stood out for you? I got I got one or two I'm dying to talk about. Well, first of all, his general humility. It was just just the general humility. Um, but second of all, uh, I really loved when we got to start talking about DJ and w- how he's watched him progress and watch him grow. I mean, Wayne called DJ a golf savant, Pearl. Yes, I love that. I love that. He sure is supportive of him, isn't he? I mean, he even goes right at addressing the how smart he is because some people were trying to hang a label of he's not so smart on him, which was – complete garbage uh and for, and wayne just tackles that straight on i've heard him say that in other other interviews i think it's absolutely fantastic and i think he's very much being proven right oh i agree and i i love the master story pearl when he um was talking about him hitting that low three iron in order to get the mud <laughs> off the ball i mean what the heck pearl who, who does that uh, Jay, I, I i i gotta tell you what i was caddying for a guy that kind of taught me the game is up in Backward golf course up in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And the, my pro, my buddy who taught me the game, I don't remember, was some par five. He, he had a really cool drive, and he's in the, right in the middle of fairway. He's got this huge chunk of mud on it. And I'm like, what are you going to do? I, you know, I was young. I had no idea what was going to happen. He says, I'm just going to smash this thing, and that mud's going to come flying off like nothing. You get out there and smash that thing, and that ball went absolutely sideways. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to, to hear this story on how – Oh, Dustin did it. Have you ever heard of anybody doing that? You you probably would have. I've never heard it, and I played a lot of golf. Yeah, no, you know what, John? the The thing is, is this is a story that the the other players won't repeat. You know what I mean? But hearing it from a third sure. party like Wayne, like like, hey man, why did you play that shot down thirteen? He goes, oh, I had a huge chunk of mud on it. I wanted it to roll so it would get off. I'm thinking, whoa. That is different have you level ever heard stuff. Of, have you heard of that, though? No. Have you heard of that before? No. Mm-mm. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. there, there's there's a guy that's just doing, well, he's number one in the world. He's doing a couple things differently than anybody else. One by being number one and another one by cleaning his ball with a three-yard on a 200-yard roller. Yeah, you know, it was it was just, <laughs> I thought it was great listening to Wayne talk about how he and Janet got to celebrate the Masters win with he and Paulina, yeah. the kids, you know, the the family. Wayne was saying it was like winning a Stanley Cup on the road. I mean, you could tell. You know what? You know what, John? I'm going to say this. His he was as genuine as anyone we've ever had on the show. Well, you and I talked about it a little bit. Now, here's the guy who has been interviewed. I don't know, ten thousand times. And look at the amount of energy. I thought you did a great job and asked some questions that I thought he was having fun with. But look at the amount of energy he gave Golf with Jay Delsing's show. I just thought that was cool. That, that's pure professionalism. And what, what great stories. And I, I know for me a couple of stories I've never even heard. Oh, bro, the story about him getting the, the owner of the Indianapolis Pacers throwing he and their goalie, Peter Mayo, and their, their, left, their all-star left winger on a private plane, and the guy's not knowing whether they were going to fly into Winnipeg or fly into Edmonton. Has the owner negotiated a deal on the ground over a uh, trying to do it over a backgammon game? Oh my gosh, just just um, just incredible! And um, and paying for the flight, you know, he the, the owner didn't yeah. pay for the flight. He the guy with the the six hundred dollar limit on his credit card paid for the four thousand dollar flight. It, it was funny. I'll tell you the one that really caught me because I happen to have a seven year old uh, grandson. But when he talked about uh, at the age of five, he made a ten year old team. You know, Jay, when kids are five, six, seven, eight, nine, if there's another team that has got a player that's one year older than them, it's normally an epic issue for all the kids to deal with. Oh my gosh, we're all seven and he's eight. How are we going to play against an eight year old? Here's Wade at five competing with 10 year olds. That is certainly in this day and age completely unheard of. And, and that was just awesome. Uh, that, that story was. One of my favorites from the interview. Yeah, Pearl. Um, and, and if you think about it, look at the way Wayne played in his NHL career. It mimics that, that whole idea. He said, similar to a couple of weeks ago when Brad Thompson said he was never the best player on his team. Wayne didn't say that, but he said he was always the smallest guy on the ice. And so a lot of his moves and a lot of his uh, deceptiveness and his his um, ability to to you know, stay out of phrase was probably, you know, born when he first started playing at five and six years old. Well, you'd have to, if there's a, a, 
Gosh dang, Jay, if you're six and there's a 10-year-old trying to take your head off, you got to be careful out there. <laughs> well, did you hear what I said to him? What I said is, uh, especially in your era in the NHL, when if you weren't yeah. careful, guys were going to remove your head from your shoulders. And he laughed and he said, yeah, I really developed it out of fear. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, what For a sure. different what a different uh, world. Well, you know what? That's going to wrap up another show. Man, I just really enjoyed getting to listen to Wayne Gretzky and, and talking golf, and maybe this will open up the door to get DJ on here, and we can talk a little bit from world number one one day. But, um, Pearl, thanks for joining me. Me, thanks for taking such great care of us. And um, we will see you next week. We've got 1968 Masters champion Bob Golby coming on next week. So don't miss that show. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hit him straight, St. Louis. Small business owners, is your internet making office tasks painfully slow? Are your file upload speeds <laughs> sluggish? Are your video calls ch- uh, 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 oppy? You need more speed. AT&T Business Fiber gives you up to 20 times faster upload speeds at half the price of cable. Faster upload speeds mean smoother, less glitchy video conferencing and faster file transfers. Visit att.com slash business fast or call 844-647-FAST to get our best price on our best service. Imagine it, up to 20 times faster upload speeds at half the price of cable. AT&T experts can help you upgrade to AT&T Business Fiber. Soon, you're going to love your internet. Call 844-647-FAST now. Comparison by Telogical Systems, 12-2020.